Well, let me click the record button. I think that's all we have today. Anybody else comes in, I will let them in. A couple of things, a uh, reminder to before we start this morning, because this is the halfway through our course already, the third week. We have three more weeks left. Hope you are learning, digging in more than you are receiving from the class. You have to work at it on your own. Then you'll get more from the book, from the Facebook Live, and from watching maybe one more time this class that will be uploaded onto YouTube all the time. Uh, for the new course, there's a third course that we are starting in August 17th. So the registration is open on our website the kingdom network.org so please make sure if you are interested in taking the third one because there is these three courses are foundational on the kingdom living what we are laying is the foundation for our life which has been destroyed by the enemy for so many centuries so if we don't lay the foundation right whatever we do miracles signs and wonders will not produce the fruit or the lasting fruit that we need so this is what we're dealing with. What I'm teaching is foundation, restoring the foundations of life, purpose, kingdom. So the registration for the new course is open. So please make sure you uh, make use of that. And uh, I have two favors to ask you as usual uh, for teaching in this course, because this is absolutely free that I am investing, pouring my life out what the Holy Spirit taught me for the last 25 years. And it's a privilege, it's a blessing for me that uh, to share with you whatever the Holy Spirit has given and we're just starting only to scratch the surface. So two favors is just like I asked last time that if you would write out or record a video of how this class has impacted or blessed you. This course, this particular course, if this I know it has. So how did this course has impacted or blessed your life? Just three sentences enough. Or if you can do a, a, a video on a phone, you know, if you have a smartphone, just do like a 90 seconds video, how this course has blessed you, impacted you, changed or opened your eyes, revolutionized, whatever. And the second favor that I would ask you for in return for teaching this course is that you would introduce the kingdom school with at least two of your friends, minimum two. You can talk to more than two. Uh, tell them to sign up for the next course that is coming in August. We have three courses available now and uh, it is good to take them in the order, part one, part two, part three. So please introduce to two others that you know, maybe a family member, church member, friend, out of town, out of the country, anywhere on this planet, you encourage them, introduce the kingdom school to them, tell them it is free, they don't have to pay any thing to be part of it. So that is the two small favors that I ask in return uh, for teaching this course. So please keep that in your mind uh, that you make sure you write down the uh, testimony before the end of the course, which is three more weeks. Let me find my... Abraham, what is the third course called? Seeing, Entering, and Manifesting the Kingdom. Thank you. That is the third one. Based on the third book, not the third book, the twelfth book I just released uh, a couple of weeks ago, plus another book. There's two books that will go with that course and eventually there's going to be two books with every course so that is my plan i'm working on it so thank you so much for joining today let me just pray and set up this okay let's pray heavenly father we thank you for this glorious day, my God, we love you. We are so thankful for what you have done in our life, everything that you are teaching us. We are so grateful. Thank you for giving us your kingdom and the keys of your kingdom. Thank you for counting us worthy to be part of this 
mandate that you plan for this planet Earth and for humans on this earth, Father. Open the eyes of our understanding. Lord Jesus, you come and teach us, illustrate, make it clear to our spirit man, to our understanding. Holy Spirit, bear witness in what we are teaching, my God, what we are learning. Let your presence and your glory engulf us. Remove every hindrances, misunderstanding, miscommunication, and every blockage out of the way. And we give you all the glory and praise. Thank you for this privilege, this freedom and power that you gave us that we're going to learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So welcome back to the Kingdom School Lesson 3 of Discovering Purpose, Calling, and Gifts. So we learned that every human being has the same purpose. Please don't forget that. Don't let anybody tell you Skip has a different purpose. Medium has a different purpose. Sex has a different purpose. Danny has a different purpose. No, we were all created for same purpose, just like every bird was created for same purpose, but we have different calling. God has called us to do something different to fulfill that purpose. So that is another foundational truth that we learned in the last classes. And today we are going to learn about true freedom and power. Every individual desire in their life is freedom. Two things, freedom and power. What is happening in the United States today? All this racial protest and riots and what are they asking for? They want to be free. They want the power. But they don't know what will give them the true freedom and power. Sometimes they misinterpret. And they don't understand what is true freedom and power. So they try to destroy and attack and kill each other. And everything, every war is for freedom and power. <laughs> but how many millions of people are killed by wars? So what is true freedom and power? True freedom is, the real freedom is the freedom to fulfill your purpose. Doesn't matter which culture you live which community or country or government system that you live, if you are not free to fulfill your purpose, you are not truly free. You could be living in the most free society on this planet Earth, because that's what we claim in the Western world, the United States, the most free society on the planet Earth. But if people are not free to fulfill what they were created for, that means they are not free. You could live under the most oppressive government like Babylon, China, or Egypt, and still fulfill what God has created you like Joseph did, Daniel did, Esther did. They were free. So freedom starts with inside, not some removing some statues, removing some somebody from somewhere or killing somebody. No, if you're not free inside, nothing can make you free. That's what Jesus said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. You shall know the truth and truth will make you free. And that's where Jesus starts his work in every individual. He starts us in our life by bringing us into freedom. But we go for power first. That's when we get into trouble. So what is real power? Power, the real power is the ability to influence others without being influenced by your circumstances. See, if you look at Jesus, he didn't own any mansions in the natural. He didn't own any donkeys that he could travel. He didn't own any boats or fishing nets, nothing of natural that we know that Jesus owns, but businessmen left their business and followed Jesus. What was the reason? Why would Peter, James, and John leave their biggest catch of their life and their boats and their nets and their parents? And the Bible says immediately they followed him, a man who doesn't own anything, no mansion, they, he, didn't, he didn't promise them a monthly salary, no support, nothing. How can people live their livelihood, follow a man 
who didn't have anything in the natural <laughs> because they understood something about Jesus that they did not see in any other human being. That's what we're going to learn today through this true freedom and power. So God's order is dominion reveals your purpose and purpose gives you freedom and freedom gives you power. That's what Jesus said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. He's the only person who can set us free to fulfill because we are all stuck in different areas of our life, different issues, different circumstances, different pressures of our life. But when Jesus come into a person's life, he's supposed to set us free from within in our spirit man. Kingdom order. This is kingdom order. Jesus gave the disciples first dominion, not power. That's what I was taught. I thought Jesus gave them power to cast out demons and heal the sick. That's the first thing Jesus gave. No, that's where we try to get it. We don't have it. The first thing Jesus restored to disciple is dominion. Remember when Peter and James met Jesus, they were at the seashore. Peter was washing the net ready to go home. And Jesus asked him, you know the story, I'm not going to go into detail, move the boat into the water. Jesus uh, sat on his boat and taught. And after the fishing, he told them, Peter, cast the net onto the water for a catch. No fishermen go for fishing during the daytime. And Peter broke all his experiences, traditions, obeyed the word, and they caught the biggest catch of their lifetime. And that is the first area God told Adam to take dominion. When Genesis 1, 26, he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And that's where Jesus started with the life, with, with, the, with his ministry, with the life in the disciples life, with the fish, taking dominion over the fish. And Peter understood, if this man can do this, bring the, this many fish into my net, during the daytime, there's nothing impossible with this man. <laughs> That's what made them follow Jesus by leaving their business because Jesus exercised the law of dominion. That's where we're supposed to live in, living, exercising the law of dominion. So Jesus gave the first disciples first dominion. Then he set them free from their maintained job that they were doing, the business, because they couldn't catch anything the previous night. They were going to go hungry. Their wives, their children might have gone hungry. They were dependent on luck because they had no control over their circumstances. And in one encounter, Jesus set them free from that bondage of this world system. And Jesus gave them freedom. And then he gave them power to cast out demons and to heal the sick. So first we need to do is to, we have to restore our birthright of dominion. If we ignore dominion, nothing will work well for us. If we go after power, or if you go after money, it won't work. We have everything that we need in our life around us. You know, we live the most developed time in the history of mankind with more luxury, more convenience, anything, almost anything we can buy with the click of a button, it will be delivered to our doorstep. <laughs> but something is missing from our society. What is missing in people's life? They're missing kingdom and purpose. That's the two things they're missing. So there's no meaning with meaning for these luxuries and things that we buy and we accumulate. It doesn't matter how big the house or whatever it is. Without kingdom and without realizing our purpose, everything is meaningless. So that's God's kingdom order. So let's receive that first mandate of dominion back from God and say, Lord, forgive us for ignoring 
your first mandate of dominion and we almost destroyed our life on this planet earth now we are going to enter to the next phase of this class the 12 definitions of dominion this is one of the favorite part in this whole course for me this 12 definition that holy spirit gave me i don't know how i got it but the holy spirit gave to me because the word dominion is a compound word it doesn't just mean one thing it includes so many things in the hebrew language sometime in english or some other western greek language touch means touch but in hebrew touch means it involves the emotions it involves the reason it include it is a it is a circle of things so when god says let them have dominion he didn't say let them rule or let them manage or let them do this he used that particular kingdom word and it means 12 different things why 12 because 12 is the number of kingdom government your purpose of having dominion and your calling will fit into one of these definitions so i want you to pay attention to these 12 definitions because your calling may fit into one of these definitions of dominion like we said god created have dominion but we won't all have dominion the same way it differs from person to person to person so feel free to take notes number one definition of dominion is to rule that is the number one responsibility god gave to son his son adam is to rule this planet on behalf of him and if adam came then his son came his son 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 sons came they were supposed to be ruling over the earth that is the number one reason god created because the god never intended for any righteous unrighteous people to be in authority or in any position on this planet earth he only wanted the righteous people governing on behalf of him so our number one responsibility to rule the earth on behalf of god not everyone rules the same way everyone can rule over something at least one gate of hell remember when jesus said i will build my church the gates of hell it's a plural word that he used the gates of hell and when when god created adam he mentioned you had to you had to take dominion over five areas it's number one the fish of the sea birds of the air cattle over the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the planet earth because devil is a spirit being satan is a spirit being and any spirit being to operate in the physical world they need a gate they need somebody or something that gives them access to the physical world bible calls it a gate so there's a gate to hell and there's a gate to heaven or gates of hell and gates of heaven is operating on the earth so what is the gate of hell whatever gives devil and his demons legal right to operate and to execute the will of satan on the earth is considered a gate in adam's time there was only five gates any of those creatures either fish either birds or the cattle any objects on the earth or any creeping things which one the devil used as a gate to enter into the garden the snake the serpent because the bible says he was more cunning than any other creature god has made how many gates can you mention now in our nation that the enemy uses to execute his will can you name some gates media media yeah um uh, entertainment entertainment education education uh, government yeah government books songs there is so many gates any position of authority 
anything that influence products, objects that the enemy uses to execute the will of their father, the devil, is considered a gate. And our assignment, just like God gave to Adam that assignment, our assignment as a church is to dispossess the enemy and, and possess that gate for God's kingdom. That's our purpose, dominion or ruling. But we neglected it, we ignored it, and we have this problem now. We are dealing with the symptoms, but from the kingdom school, we are dealing with the solution. But it takes a generation to get this right because we ignored this for generations and we are dealing with the fruit of it and it doesn't change in three days. Like Jesus spent three years with the disciples. So if you spent three years with any gate to, to influence it for God's kingdom focused, I believe it will work. So government, God never intended for any wicked person to be in a position of rulership anywhere on this planet. This earth was not created for the wicked or the devil to rule. It was made for us, God's children, the son of, Ad, son of God, Adam. That's why Proverbs 29 verse 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Any country that you go, people have a complaint about their government. When the right wing rules, the left wing complains. When the left wing rules, the right wing rules. Uh, right wing complains. Left and right is not the solution. Kingdom government is the solution. We need kingdom representative ambassadors. So how do we start this dominion? First definition of ruling. First, we start with ruling our own life, our thoughts and emotions, past abuses, traumas, mistakes, habits, and attitudes. If we do not rule over our own life, we will not be able to rule any other aspect of life. If we don't rule our own life well, there's no point of going to fight with the enemy to rule him. There will be a backlash. Don't do that, please. You rule our own life, our personal life, our thoughts, our abuses, traumas that we went through, any emotional wounds that is remaining in you. You know, I have to go through healing of emotional wounds, my father wounds from my father that I received when I was a child, physically, emotionally abused for 18 years of my life. So I didn't know who I was. My identity was messed up and uh, extremely insecure. I was not a public speaker at all. <laughs> public speaking scared me. Oh my goodness. I remember when I was in Bible school, um, I, I spent five years in cemetery. I mean seminary. <laughs> <laughs> And in that five years, there was not even one subject about the kingdom. <laughs> That's why I call it a cemetery. And when the time came, you know, we had to preach. Everybody, every student has a chance to preach in front of the class. I remember my first message. I, I memorized my message. I stood in front of my class. I forgot everything I was going to say. <laughs> so that was my first experience. Oh, speaking now, my God, thank God. I am preaching 10 times a week <laughs> in front of people, either Zoom or something, because of that healing that I had to receive in my heart, in my spirit, mind, in my soul. So please take that seriously in your life. Don't go into ministry, don't go into business without ruling your own life first your emotional abuses, traumas, habits, mistakes, because it's a matter of time, the enemy will trip you. And he will use somebody to trip you. <laughs> somebody will show up, either a man or a woman, or somebody will come and, and he will pull the rug 
from underneath our feet and we were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was here. I didn't know it was in me. So that's where it starts. So don't worry about government and everything else now. It starts with our personal life. The second definition of dominion is to govern. What is the difference between ruling and governing? It is like the diff every ruler need governors. Like the president here is the in charge of the country, then we have governors for each state. Even in the Bible, we read about governors. Nehemiah was a governor. He was not a king. He was not a ruler. He was a governor. So every ruler needs governors. Every leader needs managers. Every king needs elders. Elders can be called governors. So governors is like managers or administrators who execute the will of the ruler. It's the, it's the visionary and a manager. Visionaries provide the vision. Managers accomplishes the vision. So whatever the vision, mission, or the will of the ruler, the governor executes it. So you, you might be called to be a governor, to be a leader. The third definition of dominion is to manage. Anything God gives to us, he wants it back better shape, increased and multiplied. It's called the stewardship. So he gave us this earth and he wants it back better, <laughs> not in worse shape than he gave to us. That's what he's waiting. And remember the parable of the talents, you know, that Jesus gave two talents, five talents, one talent, and the guy who received one buried it, but the others multiplied it. So whatever God gives to us, he wants it in a better shape and multiplied when we give it back to him. Otherwise, he won't be happy. We can call, you know, God is love and God is this and merciful, but at that time, he won't be that kind, actually. The fourth definition of the word dominion is to master. Master means to become the best at something. Whatever you do, your purpose involves mastering something. The more things you master, the more you prosper in your life. If you don't master anything, money won't come to you. You want to make money? Master something. Become the best at something. Because when I started ministry, you know, I didn't know exactly what God called me to do. I, want, I tried to be a pastor. No, I started with evangelistic meeting. Uh, then went into as helping establishing churches. Then I ran a Christian school. Then I had an orphanage. I had all those things. Finally, it took me a while to figure out the exact thing that God has called me to do. That was the kingdom message. This is my assignment God has given to me. So it wasn't made clear until I was in my early 40s. So it will take time for you to figure out exactly which vein that God called you to flow in your life. Everybody is not called to do the same thing. So then in 2016, October, that's when God came and said, now is the time to run with the kingdom message. And ever since, that's all I talk about. That's all I live for. I eat and breathe and sleep. The kingdom of God. Because that's my thing. That's my area of mastery. God has given me 12 volumes of books on the kingdom. When I was sitting and typing and typing and typing, typing, I didn't know why I was typing. I asked God, Lord, who wants this? Nobody is interested to hear about the kingdom. I know Dr. Miles Monroe was there and he was God. And 
And I didn't have Skip Joe. Maybe Skip Joe was there seven years ago. <laughs> he is the one who got the book and he was so blessed and he will tell 10 other people, you should read Abraham's book. And nobody was interested in it. And all of a sudden, when 2016 came, when God commissioned me to preach this message, people began to come from different places of the earth. They want to know more. And it is continued to grow daily. So which area of kingdom or ministry that God wants you to specialize in? There has to be at least one. You know the old saying, you cannot be the uh, trade, jack of all trade and master of none. <laughs> no, don't be a, don't be a, Jack of all trade and master of none. Focus on at least one. So when you master something, do it like nobody else did it before. You will have dominion and people will come and pay you for your service and you'll never be poor. Number five, the fifth definition of Dominion is to establish. It is the nature of mankind. They want to establish, they want to build, they want to increase, they want to make something happen. That is the way we are created because that is the image and likeness of God in us. Especially for men that I found out when we cannot establish, accomplish something, we get frustrated. Right, men? <laughs> when our work is not going well, it frustrates a man. He doesn't feel productive. He just, he just feel worthless and useless. And a woman is not enough for a man because why God gave work to Adam before he brought the woman? The family was the last thing God gave to Adam, not first. And we reversed the order. Then he brought the helpmate to help man to do his work in the garden. But it got messed up in our culture and our day because of abuse, misunderstanding, rebellion, all kinds of things. And we are paying a huge price. In if, if anything is messed up on this earth, is family life and marriage. I can guarantee you that. So it is the inherent nature of mankind to build, to establish, because we are created in the nature and likeness of God. And that is part of dominion. God may want you to establish something for God's kingdom. Make sure you are not establishing your personal kingdom. Because if you build the Abraham John's international ministries, you know what happened after Abraham John is gone? His international ministry is gone. <laughs> Don't call ministries after your name, please. Don't do it because the ministry is a gift that God gave to us and it is connected to his kingdom and we all need a name to register, to be accountable to the government and all those things, but not for our personal gain and fame and we are trying to build a, a man's kingdom. The next definition of dominion is to be fruitful. Actually, that is the first commandment God gave to mankind is to be fruitful. Our prosperity depends on the fruit where we bear. If there is no income, that means there is no fruit. If there is fruit, people will come to you to buy it. You know, when you go to shop, you see this fruit, fruit store, you know, with all kinds of apples and oranges and grapes. And, and that when you see that fruit, you feel attracted. You go to that store and you pay the money to get that fruit. So we're supposed to bear fruit in our spirit, soul, and body, not just children. So when we have fruit, people will come to enjoy that fruit, to receive the benefit of that fruit. So fruit is not the benefit for the tree. It is for the benefit of others. 
but there's a seed in that fruit. You pay for the fruit. That's why the tree benefit from the seed and we benefit from the fruit. And we will learn about that in the process of dominion as we go along. The first mandate is to have dominion and the first commandment is to be fruitful, not singing. That's what we were taught that first commandment is to sing. No, bear fruit. John the Baptist came with the message, if any tree doesn't bear fruit, it will be cut down. He didn't come say, if any tree is not singing, they will be cut down. No. Jesus said the same thing. John chapter 15, verse 16. It's not that you have called me, but I have called you, chosen you, so that you may go and bear fruit. New Testament, Old Testament tells us the same thing. Go and bear fruit. If we ignore those two things, nothing else will work in the life the way it's supposed to work. The first mandate and the first commandment. So it has to be the foundation of everything we do. If we ignore those two, nothing else will work the way it's supposed to work. Life becomes so burdensome, painful, unbearable, and we feel like running away sometime. Number seven, the seventh definition of dominion is to restore. Our calling might involve restoring an area of life that has been damaged or came under a defect because of the fall of Adam. God started in Genesis 1 by restoring this planet. That is how we begin to manifest his nature and likeness. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, verse 21, whom heaven must receive, is talking about Jesus. Until the times of restoration of all things. Everybody say all things. How many things God wants to restore? All things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So if there was a holy prophet. There's a holy prophet, that means there are unholy prophets. <laughs> How do you know the difference between a holy prophet and unholy prophets? Holy prophets will speak restoration. Unholy prophets will prophesy destruction. Until the restoration of all things which is God has spoken by the mouth of all things. And it will be restored until Revelation 11.15, which says the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That is the final restoration. So the eighth definition of dominion is to work. Work, 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 work. And there's a difference between a work and a job that we are going to learn today. God gave man work before he gave him a family. Because there's a part of man that receives fulfillment from his work. Doesn't matter how anointed you are, how close your relationship with God is. If you are not fulfilled in your work, you feel like there is something missing. Doesn't matter how many hours you pray. How many hours you read your Bible? But if you are not fulfilling the work that God has given you, you won't be happy. Because that is part of our nature, the dominion that God has created us to do. So God made Eve and brought her to the place of man's work. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Genesis 2 verse 15. Then he looked at that man and said, this is not good. This is too much for this man to do. I'm going to bring a helper comparable to him. 
If your helper is not comparable, she or he is not a helper. She is an exhauster. Difference between a job and a work. That's where most people are confused these days. They go to work, then they look for a job. Every morning they say, I have to go to work. But when they look for a work, they say they are looking for a job. <laughs> what is the difference? <laughs> you work your job, right? <laughs> you work at your job, no? There's a huge difference between a job and a work. A job is something that you do until you discover your work. Your work is God-given. God sent to you. The reason that God sent to you, that's your calling. Job is something that you do until you discover your work. Jesus was a carpenter until he was released into his calling. Moses was a shepherd, that was his job, until he was released into his calling. David was a shepherd until he discovered his calling to be a king when Samuel came to anoint him. Peter, James, and John were fishermen. That was their job or a business they were doing until they discovered their work for which God sent them to this planet, which was to be an apostle. So a job is something that you do, but work is who you are. You cannot separate you from your work. Like I said, I eat and breathe and sleep and have my being in the kingdom. It is impossible to separate that from me. Because that's part of my being. If the job that you do is your work, then there's nothing wrong with it. If the current employment or a job that you're doing and you feel like this is what God called me to do, your heart and your spirit is in agreement, and there's nothing wrong with it. It is absolutely right for you to be there. So now we are going to go further with this difference between a job and a work. A job is based on your education. A work is based on your calling, skills, and gifting. A job is based on opportunity or availability. That's why people say they're looking for a job. But work creates opportunity for you and others. When Joseph found his work in Egypt to save Egypt from famine, it created opportunity, employment opportunity, maybe for thousands of people in Egypt to build the storehouses, to collect the grain, to harvest, to plant. Oh my goodness, that was maybe the largest enterprise Egypt has ever gone through to prepare for seven years. So it creates opportunity for others. A job is something that you do to make money. You won't work. You won't do your work to make money. Moses didn't go to Egypt to obey the call of God, thinking that, oh my goodness, I'm going to make $10,000 per month as a salary. That's a good deal. No. David did not get into his kingship because of the salary. No. Jesus did not release into his calling for salary. Peter, James, and John was not released into their calling because of the money. No. That is the job that you do. Work is what you do to fulfill your purpose. Money comes to you as a reward. Money is a part of the package. You know, people come sometimes, when I used to have this religious organization, you know, first thing they ask me, they want to work with me. The second thing they want, how much, how much I'm going to pay them? <laughs> That's not the way I started. Nobody promised me anything. There was nothing. Jesus did not promise Peter a lunch. Nothing was promised when they left their boat and, and followed him. A job is something you 
do for a certain hours of a day, work is a lifetime assignment. You won't retire from your work. You retire from a job because your calling never ends. It is seasonal, but it never ends. It is eternal. Excuse me. A job is something that you do. A work is part of your being. That's why it's so important to find your work, what you're called to do. You retire from a job, but you will never retire from your work, not in this life or in the next. It just go from one season to the next. A job is something you do to help others fulfill their purpose. Work is what you do to serve and bless others. And as a, as a benefit, you get blessed back as a reward. A job is something that you do for a salary. Like I said before, work is what you do to create wealth and money follows you as a result. A job doesn't give you fulfillment. You can have the best position in a company, but in your spirit, man, you feel like there is something missing, unfulfilled, because you are not doing your work that you called you to do. Work gives you fulfillment. A job is temporary. Work is what you are born to do. Jesus said, I finished the work that you gave me, Father. I glorified your name by finishing the work. People can fire you from a job, but no one can fire you from your work. That's why the, the motto of this course was find a job that no, or find a work that nobody can fire you from. That's your calling. Nobody can fire you from your calling. No, not, no. Human being is qualified for that or has the power to do it. A job is limited to a place. Work is not limited to a space or time. You can do it from anywhere. Anywhere you go, you can function in your calling. Sometimes it is limited to a place, but if God takes you out of your country or a place, you still function in that work that God has created you. So those are the differences between a work and a job. People are worried about unemployment. Many countries, they say their unemployment rate is so high. Em employment is not the problem. People have not found their work, what they're called to do. That's why this kingdom school is so important so that people can find their purpose and their calling and their gifts. So the ninth definition of dominion is to subdue. This is a very key definition of the word subdue. Subdue means to make something submit by force. Anything that you set out to do in life, you will face enormous amount of resistance from natural world, spiritual world, and from other people. So that's when you have to exercise this definition of the dominion is to subdue it. I know in the morning, some people have difficulty waking up. Their body doesn't want to get up. It's time to do something. That's when you subdue that body and get out of bed intentionally. Not because you feel like it. Subdue means doing the right thing when you don't feel like it. That's another definition of subdue, means doing the right thing when you don't feel like it. That means you are exercising the definition of subdue, make submit by force, not people. We don't dominate, we don't force people to submit to us, our emotions, circumstances, because God created this earth in a way, whatever we do, there has to be a resistance that we have to overcome. How many of you love to do exercise? <laughs> 
I don't. <laughs> but I have to because it is good for me. I know it is a good for me, so I have to go for a walk or something, but I have to overcome that resistance when you exercise. It's not easy, but it, the more you do it, it becomes easier. So whatever we do, we have to overcome the law of resistance. That's the way God established this earth. If an airplane has to fly, it has to overcome that law of gravity. Everything on the earth says, no, you cannot fly. You have to stay on the ground. But that power of that engine and the law of flight says it has to go up. Number 10, the 10th definition of dominion is to overcome. We need to overcome things that come at us and against us. There is defensive and offensive. Things will come at us unexpectedly. But we have to overcome it. There are, there are seven things we need to overcome. Areas we need to overcome in our life. Number one is this world. This world is under the influence of the evil one right now because it is not redeemed yet. Majority of the people in the world are not saved. So there's a fight going on through the media, through the political system, through neighbors, that people who doesn't like you, and relatives and church people and family members. Everything will try to push you down, but you have to overcome it, that force that is in this world. The second thing we need to overcome is temptations. Temptations will come the the time that you the least expect it and from people that you don't expect it at all. But we have to overcome temptation because God will not let you go through temptation more than what you can bear. Number three, persecutions. If you live godly in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted for our faith. So we have to overcome it. Remember Paul, how many persecutions he has to face, how many, how many uh, beatings and stoning and, and uh, things that he had to endure in his life. It's an amazing thing that, that he overcame. Paul said he overcame. He said he, he left things behind of the past. The number four, the law of resistance we need to overcome. Like I said, mentioned before, even before the fall, there was resistance on the earth. That's why God said to Adam, subdue and take dominion. That was the commandment before the fall. So God did not make life easy for us on the earth, even, even before the fall. There were things that we need to overcome. We have to put our potential to use. And we just think, you know, before the fall, everything was so easy and cheesy. No. That's where God put Adam to the garden and said, work means manifest. That's everything in you. Put the potential to use. Dig out the gold. It's not easy. Dig out the diamond. It's not easy. Dig out the oil. It's not easy. Learn an instrument. It's not an easy. <laughs> Even before the fall, it was like that. And God expects us to maximize what we have. I think that is the next definition. So the next thing we have to overcome is negative thoughts and mindsets. Anybody struggle with negative thoughts and mindsets? I do. Even before this class, you know, sometime, Lord, I help me to teach this class. <laughs> I need the grace of God. So I had to overcome that resistance. Number six, weaknesses. You know, there's a Dunkin' Donuts coffee place next to our church building here, our office building. I have to go there at least once a week. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows what Dunkin' Donuts is. It's a coffee and donuts place. 
and it's an east coast thing but they are moving now to the west so there is there's only two things two Dunkin Donuts I know the entire Denver area and one is happened to be close by me so it's kind of a weakness I had to have that old-fashioned donut and a cup of coffee oh my goodness that will take care of my day <laughs> I just saw Danny sipping a coffee cup there. So <laughs> the seventh thing that we had to overcome is Satan himself. Oh my gosh. Satan himself came to Jesus. Remember the temptation that he brought before Jesus was released into fulfilling his calling. Your greatest temptation and resistance will come just before your greatest breakthrough. So if you're going through unusual pressure, temptations, know that there is something great is coming. God is preparing something and the enemy can sense it. And he's trying to detour you. So that is the next definition of dominion is to maximize. Whatever God gives us, he expects us to maximize it before he will release us to the next level. Are you maximizing the opportunity he gave you now? Your time, your potential, everything God has given you. If you are not maximizing, don't ask him for more. God will only give you what you are able to manage well. Or he will answer the only prayers that you have been prepared to manage. Otherwise, you won't answer that prayer. Doesn't matter how long we pray. So the best prayer is, Lord, prepare me to manage more. Give me the capacity to manage more. He wants us to maximize the 12th one the 12th definition, I wanted to memorize this 12 definitions in your life, is cultivate. Cultivate means to create an environment that brings out the best in something. So he, God took Adam to the garden and said, cultivate, tend, work at it. That's why God won't give us finished products. He will give us raw materials. He didn't give us meals, but he gave us vegetables and other ingredients and chicken and everything. We had to cook it and make it. God didn't give us airplanes, but he gave us the raw materials to imagine and manufacture that airplane. God didn't give us cars, but he gave us raw materials. And God is always faithful to give us raw materials. But we are looking for finished products. That's when we don't get the breakthrough. A heathen will go and make the car or manufacture a car while we are waiting for the miracle, for God to make the car. God won't make the car for us. God did not make furniture, but he created trees and hid the furniture inside that tree. And now you imagine, put your potential to work and make the furniture you want. So God seldom gives us finished products. The only time he gave the finished products is the fish and the free bread that Jesus gave. That's why he said seldom. Every other time he gave raw materials. Even manna was a raw material. They have to cook it to whatever they want it to be. The only time God gave raw material is, no, finished product is when Jesus multiplied the loaves and fishes. I, didn't, I don't think they had to cook it. It was cooked. <laughs> it came cooked from the miracle. He gives us raw materials and a picture of the finished product in our imagination. And we have to work now based on that finished imagination and bring out the product we desire. And those are the seven, uh, 12 definitions of dominion and next week next lesson we will explore on areas we exercise dominion 
what are the areas in life that we exercise dominion that will be next thursday same time same place so thank you so much for joining me today i hope you're blessed and challenged and enlightened by something about dominion because it's a compound word it's not a single thing and can you believe people have problem with the word dominion christians you know one lady asked me two days ago when she forwarded one of the facebook facebook live shows to somebody and uh, he this friend asked her oh is he teaching dominion <laughs> it's like it's like she can that this friend can believe that i'm teaching dominion the very reason god created us it's like telling bird not to fly or telling a fish not to swim how crazy is that and we have neglected that much the deception the enemy brought into the church world we are not allowed to talk about the purpose that we were created for that is the influence of the religious spirit and people misunderstand the word dominion because dominion was taught like taking over that is some people believed and taught you know we had to take over governments we had to take over our nation we don't take over nothing we live out our purpose and our calling and as a result whatever happens glory be to god so i never use the term take over we are supposed to take over or we are created to take over no we are created to have dominion and that word means 12 different things so please teach people now since you have the right definitions what exactly dominion means and their eyes will be open so now is the time for questions feedback comments if you have anything related to what i was sharing you have the absolute freedom and the right to ask me questions <laughs> and don't hold back don't be shy and uh, and if there is more than what i shared i am willing to learn i want to learn from you because i don't know everything i'm constantly in the state of innovation i'm learning every day so if you have a question or a comment or a feedback please raise your hand and uh yeah your mic is on go ahead danny yeah concerning um like work concerning concerning work and you and i think you i don't know the exact words you use but you talked about that we have at least one so we're talking you can have multiple things in this life uh, that we're called to do uh no master Am I it right? master you at least master at least one thing okay. but you can master more than one thing as many as things you want to do master you can do it but at least one has to be there Okay. Like I said, many most people are jack of all trade, a master of none. <laughs> and if you can master more than one area, go for it. There's no limit. I said at least one. Okay. So I, let me let me let me try to clarify what I'm saying. So I know that God has called me. I have a nonprofit, five hundred one c three, and I've had it for several years. Yeah, and I work with kids in schools that are struggling. Yeah, so I work in education, right? Yeah. Um, but I also, you know, work in the community doing ministerial stuff. Working, doing it's completely different from working with kids. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking about mastery, should I just be focusing on just the one thing? What is the thing God told you when He called you? Like when when he called Moses, he said, "I wanted to go to Egypt." When he called Paul, Jesus said, "This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to witness before kings and Jews and Gentiles, and I am calling you to do this." And when he called the other disciples, he said, "Follow me. I will make you fishers of men." So, what is the exact thing that God 
mentioned, if he mentioned, if he said, when he called you, that is the thing. Okay. We can do so many things we like or we are good at, mm -hmm. but the end of the day is, am I doing what God told me to do? That is the calling. That is the assignment. So I just feel like, you know, like I told you, I have a nonprofit, but I, I, I was an associate pastor for a lot of years. Yeah. And I just felt over the last year or so, maybe two, maybe I felt it for a lot longer. I just never responded to it, that that wasn't what God wanted, you know, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. I, you know, sitting in the church and being an associate pastor, there was other things that um, I just I felt God calling me to do. to do. And I heard you saying earlier that, you know, um, you know, that it was like through evangelism and then and then pastoring and the, pastoring yeah. and then building schools that you kind of found yeah. i even think with the apostle paul right he started as a teacher or, or whatever he did and he ended up as an apostle i just think i'm finding out as i go on yeah uh, as i get closer to god what he's really what his purpose really is for my life or his call i should yeah. say his call i'm sorry yeah for my life is yeah but i was just wondering if there's multiple uh things that we should be mastering um, you know, different areas like David, I think I used that in the last class or something, mm -hmm. you know, David was a shepherd while he was feeding the sheep, he was mastering something, how yeah. to shoot a, a sling and how to mm -hmm. play music. That was the two skills he developed, which God used yes. to release him to the next phase of his life, to the calling that he had. So God can use in different seasons, different things in our life, or different, even our calling is seasonal. That's what I was saying. So David started with the, as a musician, then he became a warrior, then he became a musician for Saul in his palace, then he became a fugitive running for his life, <laughs> then he became a king. But he was called the whole time. Yeah. But he was Thank you. That's good. That's a good and analogy. he found his his thing, you know, like Joseph, he was in the prison, he was serving Potiphar, managing his thing for a while, until then he reached his final place of, his calling was the palace in Egypt. So different things we had to go through in life until we get there. That's good, thank so, you. You're welcome. Oh, it sucks, hand is all the up. I didn't see it, my brother. <laughs> Yeah, to unmute it there sucks. All right, done that. There, there you go. I go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, two questions. One has to do with uh, I think as a, as a follow up on what my brother was talking about earlier. Um, I want to just um put simply, would you how would you simply help a person to know how he or she can identify his or her calling? How how how, how is it? How does one ident identify that this is my calling? And then number two is um, 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 the issue about the, when you talk about the, the point of overcome, to overcome. You know, um, you talked about, you named seven, seven things that, seven things that we need to overcome. And you talked about number two was temptation. And then number seven was Satan. So I was like, what's the difference between Satan and temptation? Satan brings the temptation to you. <laughs> or even through other people. So how do you identify your calling? That is what the next, actually this course is actually, you know, is part of it. When that's when you have, that's what happens when you're born again. When you, when God calls you, he tells you something, you know, when he called the people of Israel out of Egypt, he said, I'm going to take you to the land that flows with milk and honey. When God called Abraham, he said, I wanted to get out of your country, kindred, and father's house to a land that I'm going to show you. It has to come from God. And there are 10 ways that we will learn in this class, in this course, actually. Uh, maybe the next week or the following week, there are 10 ways God communicates his calling to a person. Okay. 
And sometimes he'll put a picture in our heart, in our spirit man. Sometimes he'll tell us like he told Paul, Moses, all these people. And sometimes it's just a desire that in your spirit man, not the desire of your mind that goes away, but the desire of the Holy Spirit will never go away from your spirit man. It doesn't matter how long you live on this planet Earth. Okay, a follow-up is, is um, can, can singing or making music be a calling for someone? Pardon? Can singing or making music, music be a yeah. calling for someone? Absolutely. David, you know, he was a musician. That's what God used him to get into the palace. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Miriam, did I see your hand? Yes, you, yes, you did at the moment. Okay. Um, because I think uh, if we read the parable about the talents, we can see that Jesus gave him two and he got two more. And I think if we are... Um, if we do what what he wants us to do, he, he wants to give us more, well, and it's not uh, only when we come to heaven, but but it's also in lifetime. He gives us more to develop, to well develop. Yeah. Yeah, and and then suddenly we are at the place where he really wants us to to be, where the calling is fulfilled. Yeah. That's what exactly that one definition of the the means to maximize. Yeah. What God gave to us now, maximize yeah. it, then He will use the next door. Yeah, and He will give us more. Yeah. That's the way it works. That's kingdom living. I see Anthony Belial. Is that Bridget? I don't see the picture there, but I see a person. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. For hey, that. Abraham Don. Yes, it's Bridget. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I know you came in late, but so I want to say hi. Any comments or questions you have? No, I missed a, um, a few things I was trying to write down feverishly, but I will go back and watch it. So I'm good. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank no, you. this was this was good. I, Trina and I have been having the conversation about the difference between, um, you know, your job and your calling. So this was. Perfect timing for this. Perfect. Thank God. Thank you Thank for you. all those books. It so should be on their way. Oh, good. Excellent. <laughs> okay. I think you came in late. So there's a third course that the registration is open for all okay. seeing, entering, and manifesting the kingdom. And there were two favors that I was asking in return for teaching this course. One was introduce the kingdom school to two other people that you know your friends, okay. friends, family, church, anybody, tell them about the Kingdom School and tell them the registration is open for the next season in August. And, uh, and is that, that that's going to be, so should, I guess, let me back, step back for a second. Does it make the most sense to listen to the first class first, first course, though? Yeah, first course. Discovery. Will you be, is that going to be, are you going to be offering it again soon or? Yes, August. Three courses are coming up in August. We are starting the new three courses, means not new, but the next semester actually. Gotcha. Of the same courses, but there's going to be a third one. I've been teaching two, then we are adding a third one. And uh, let, I would encourage people to take it in the order, discovering the lost kingdom first. Discovering purpose, calling second, then seeing, entering, and manifest the kingdom third. Got it. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. So please introduce, do me a favor for by introducing to two other people that you know, at least minimum two. Uh, then just write down a feedback about this course and how this course has blessed or impacted your life. Just three sentences. Okay either written or on a video, on a phone or whatever, 90 seconds, that if you do that, I would appreciate it. Those okay. are the things I'm asking in return for teaching this course. Okay. And then do we have any homework this week for next week? No, we do. I haven't. I'm looking into that right now. Uh, so the reading assignment is chapters 9 and 10. 
book, uh, Purpose, Calling, and Gifts, chapters 9 and 10, and Luke chapter 19 from the Bible. Luke chapter 19, and books from the book, chapters 9 and 10. Nine ways to have dominion, process of dominion. Believing you read the other reading assignments, previous ones, and if there's any questions or something comes up by reading the, from reading the book, you can bring it to the class and we can go over it. Even, even before we start the lesson, there's a few minutes to discuss those things. So make use of that opportunity. And this is the time for you to maximize this opportunity like we just heard today. <laughs> maximize, learn everything you can and dig in and make it so clear. So no, go, don't go home. Don't go with any doubts in your heart. But it takes time. You know, there's no cook fix in the kingdom. Jesus spent three years with the disciples, day and night. And this is only a one-hour class a week. So imagine the impact they had and we are having. This is a one-week, one-hour class. Jesus was with them 24-7 for three years to change their mindset from religion into the kingdom. And that was not easy for Jesus. He has to go through all kinds of things. Sometimes he got impatient. He had to rebuke them. How long can I bear with you guys? Are you not catching this? <laughs> so that's normal. So uh, keep digging because this is too much there's so much to learn, but so much is at stake that we wasted our life and many people before us. So we have to restore the foundation of our lives so next generation can benefit from this. So if there's no other comments or feedback, yes, my brother Skip, you have to unmute there. Click on the microphone button. Yeah, there you go. All right. Am I, you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Well, I just, uh, in reading your book, you made a comment, work, retire, age, and sleep. So, you know, I've worked. <laughs> <laughs> I like that comment because it kind of spoke to me. You I know, like, for many years in a print shop operating a, a printing press. And the company I worked for are the downsized. So I thought I was going into retirement because that was my calling before running that printing press. I thought I was going into retirement, make it easy, you know. But you know, even as you get older, I'm 74 now, as you get older, still God has callings for you. And he had a calling for me within two to three months. I already found a job working with develop mentally disabled adults in a in a residential facility and I know that's where I belong so I'm just sharing that God once you finish one calling it doesn't matter what your age is he may have another place for you to go because he's called you somewhere else Amen. Uh, I don't know to share that that's true because calling is seasonal it now you won't retire from your calling you retire from a job, but not from your calling. Okay, well, let's pray. Thank you for that comment and testimony, Skip. God bless you. You've been a blessing. I have known, we have known each other for, I don't know, 20 years <laughs> or more. Actually, so I remember you're working at that print shop at the ministry here. And you helped me many times. And you've been a partner of this ministry. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. Uh, so let's pray for each other, that God will make our calling, this season of calling, so clear to each of us. So you pray for each other, for Skip, for Miriam, for Danny, for Suggs, for Bridget, Lord, what is that exact thing that you want us to do in this season? That is one prayer because the next one is 
pray that God will open doors for this kingdom schools to be started in every nation, country, city, town, everywhere, because they need it. Every churches need a kingdom school. Every Christian business need a kingdom school. Every city, town need a kingdom school. Every public school, Christian school need a kingdom school. So pray that God will open doors and raise up the people with the resources and to teach and to train. I know some of the part of the school, they're already starting kingdom school, like Trina, uh, Bridget's relative, she started teaching another group last night, like 25 people. Terry Ross, he's starting another one in Pennsylvania. And maybe one of you or some of you are called to teach this. Do it. I encourage you to start a kingdom school and help bless somebody with their foundation of their life and their purpose and their calling and why we are here. So please pray that. So less three minutes, let's spend in prayer for each other. God to make that calling so clear to you, to each other, and for kingdom schools to be started all over the world, in every city, town, and state, and nation, in every language. And you can unmute your phone, uh, microphone when you pray, so we can hear each other when we pray. So that is good thing to hear our voices. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy. You can, you can raise your voice and pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for making your calling so clear to us. We thank you, Father, that you're not thank you for this opportunity to join together. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to learn grow and understand the kingdom. Thank you for the implications of it. How we address it in our daily lives. Have the opportunity to to agree. Help each of us reflect on what our callings are. Whether it's a turning point or a turn so that we can further the kingdom, teach deals, they understand them, teach others, teach others, I just pray for the young people, the work that they have called to do, the purpose of calling to see the doors of the world. Thank you. What you have in mind, Father, what you have in mind, Father, what you have called today to do in this season, Father. Father, we Bless thank you, God, you, God. that our age has nothing to do with your calling, Father. We thank you, Father. Uh, our calling is right now. I speak life and blessings over my brothers and sisters right now. And Father, I just pray, Father, for the kingdom, God, to advance over us. I pray for the kingdom to expand, Father. I pray the kingdom to be uh, pioneered throughout the world, Father. I pray that men and women, Father, would receive the revelation of the kingdom, be able to teach true doctrine, God, be able to call them in there to influence influence the kingdom of God. Thank you and right now for every kind of school, Father. The kingdom schools will be planted. In every country, God, in every nation, every city, Father. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing through the kingdom. You're restoring the kingdom, Father. We love you, Lord. We give you honor and praise. Your precious name. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I bless them with your grace. Even this season, Father, this July is the month we need to push to move forward, Father. Lord, no temptation, no discouragement, no disappointment will stop them, but give them the extra energy to move forward, extra grace to push through every obstacles that come their way, my God. I thank you for the word they heard. Let it grow in their heart, germinate and bring forth fruit. And we give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, this is the first course that I'm teaching on discovering purpose, calling, and gifts. The first one was discovering the kingdom. Even after that course, there are people who launched into their ministry or their calling and their business from that course, that six weeks course I did. Actually, it was a seven week, and people are launched into their assignment. And I thank God for it. Uh, there's Grace, there's James, and few others, and those who are teaching this now, that was their assignment they discovered. 
So God is doing amazing things. So I give him all the glory and praise. And Miriam just sent a message saying, skip to skip, don't retire. I'm 80 years young now. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. Denmark is going to be a kingdom nation. That's my vision. So thank you guys. God bless you. And this lesson will be uploaded on YouTube in within 24 hours. So you can watch it again. And uh, please read the book again and again and again and again. And it will be more. Each time you read, you will receive something new. So I will see you on next Thursday. Same time, same place. Until then, remain blessed. Bye-bye.